So I would like to start this additional thoughts video on 36 chambers with two statements that are both accurate yet seemingly completely contradictory. The first statement is that it is a fact. The Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Fact. The second statement is... <laughs> she's throwing me off over there laughing at my joke. The second statement is... Despite, despite the first statement, I have and will continue to fuck with the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> now, I like those two statements because I feel like it's the first time in a while since really exploring hip-hop and listening to the music and hearing the slang, the lingo, terminology, where I feel like I'm on the inside and understanding. <laughs> Whereas a month ago, I would be like, well, I don't get it. How can you... You can't fuck with the Wu-Tang Clan, but you fuck with them. Like, that doesn't make any sense. No, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> perfect sense. Because 36 Chambers is fantastic. Fantastic. I, <clears throat> you know, I don't do ratings, right? I don't like to do that. But I have every, every now, I think I've actually maybe only done it once. I toss out a fire rating. I almost, almost gave this a fire. Um... If I have any complaints about this album, the only complaint that I have, and it's very nitpicky, is that on some of the tracks, these skits are in the front instead of the back. And I don't have a problem with the skits. I kind of enjoy the skits. But on some of them, like I think it's Seventh Chamber is one of them. On Method Man, it's one of them. It's kind of a long, drawn-out skit. And like the Method Man one, they're talking about, they're coming up with all these you know, ridiculous ways to torture somebody, whatever. But it was, it's at the front, I can't like skip over it to just get to the song. And I'd rather get to the song. And if it's at the back of the track, then I can skip. So that's the only complaint. <laughs> that's the only complaint I have. Every single track has a heart next to it. I didn't really spend any time with the, the alternate tracks that are kind of part of the expanded edition that I did not react to. I basically just treat this as an album and listen to it in that form. I haven't really spent much time. Although I did listen to... The homegrown version of Method Man, and it was cool because that did not have the skit. Um, I got a little rowdy. <laughs> I got a little rowdy with this one. You know, Monday morning and I are not on speaking terms right now. Like we, Monday morning and I will exist at the same time and at the same place, and that's about it. We don't acknowledge each other. We don't have to say anything to each other. You know, we're just it's not a great relationship right now. When I put on this album Monday morning, and I was just kind of agitated about having to go to work and bring on the ruckus or bring the ruckus came on. I was like, OK, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> I'm going to be all right today, you know, because I, I remember on my reaction coming off of Dark Twisted Fantasy and dropping into this album was such a, a sonic shift. And somebody even left a comment about how I should start doing like musical palette cleansers right where if i'm going into an album that's radically different from what i just got off of i should listen to something similar in style so i don't have this this auditory shock going into a new album because on that first track it did take me a while to shift but as soon as i did my god dude this this whole album bring the ruckus is fucking uh, bring the motherfucking ruckus like i almost feel like it's a metal song because as soon as it starts going i just start screaming it track two i had an experience I'm going to share with you guys. I hope you can hear what I'm saying and understand what I'm saying. And, and I believe that you will. But track two is shame on a person. And it's a cool jam. <clears throat> and yesterday I was driving in and blah, blah, blah. I put it on and I was, you know, bumping my head and I legit went shame on a. And I went, oh, oh, well, that's that's new to me. <laughs> that was very very new to be so into the song that I said a word that, you know, I'm not supposed to say. I very much clearly remember on my late registration reaction on the track, Crack Music, I had an issue with that song because it, the, the lyrics, you know, it's that, it's that crack music, that real black music. And I remember discussing that and, you know, that just... It was something that, for me, it's, it's difficult to get around for, I think, probably all of the obvious reasons, right? <laughs> so for me to be so into that song, track two, and actually blurt it out as I'm singing because I'm just into it, was 
It definitely caught me off guard. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that it's okay or, or whatever, but it was just, I wanted to share that with you guys because, yeah, it was just, it just surprised the shit out of me, honestly. So there you go. Um, and really, I think it shows this whole album has so much energy, so much energy. You know, Clan on the Front, or was it, is it Clan on the Front? Yeah, Clan on the Front. You get those those woo wah woo wah like you get that you know the killer bees and like Adam was talking about on the conversations with the community where you just feel like these guys are with you and you just start kind of mobbing around with this invisible group the Wu Tang Clan <laughs> it's, it's crazy it's crazy but there's so much energy and it just it just soaks into your pores and it crawls around inside of your ears and. Like on one hand, I, I you know, especially listening to Telephone the same week by No Name, which is drastically different, and lyrically that's such a great experience, and and her flow is is great too, although it's a completely different style. I listen to these tracks from Thirty Six Chambers, and okay, maybe they're not necessarily telling a story or or and, I mean some of them are, but there's just so much energy. And I can't remember which track it is, but on one of them, there's a skit where it's Method Man. He's explaining all the members of the groups and what they do and this and that. And then at the end, he's talking about how they form this Voltron, you know, super powerful creature that is the Wu-Tang Clan. And the first time I heard that, I was thinking that it was kind of funny. It felt like a bit of a PR line, you know. And I, was it at the end of Method Man? It may have been. It was around there. It's, it's somewhat late in the album. <laughs> but I remember when I got to Protect Your Neck. That, that track, every verse was, you know, somebody dropping in with a verse and somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. And I felt like, holy shit, it's actually happening. What he's describing, each member is snapping onto this form to create this, this track that is this all powerful <laughs> because Protection Act is still my favorite track. Cream is, is incredible. I really like Cream a lot too. Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Awesome. Mystery of chess boxing. Can it all? Can it be all so simple? Is cool. You know, on, the, on my initial listen, I enjoyed it, but I, I didn't really like, like click with it. And I watched the music videos, and the music videos were just kind of like your standard, you know, '90s rap music videos. There was nothing, anything amazing about it. But for whatever reason, that track and that music video, just kind of seeing people hanging out, it it gave that vibe a little bit more of a, a click in my brain, and so. Kind of fell in love with that song too. Clan on the front is awesome. The Method Man is all, messing, all tears is great. I mean, it's all great. Even the Seventh Chamber Part Two, top to bottom, top to bottom. So then I said, you know, I said I got rowdy with this album. <laughs> then I got really crazy. Then I started thinking, well, if this came out, I think this came out before Illmatic. I never looked it up. Was Illmatic '94? Because this was '93. Then I thought, well, maybe this is better than Illmatic. And then I thought, don't say that on YouTube because <laughs> people will go crazy. And then I started to just think about these two albums. Like, okay, why is Illmatic so highly regarded? And I think the reason why it is is because Illmatic, top to bottom, there's a lot more of a story being told there. There's more of a message being shared there. Lyrically, it's fantastic. The beats are great. I mean... Illmatic really is, I go back to it every now and then. I go back to about once a month. And every time I go back, it sounds a little different. And I understand it a little bit more. Not that I didn't like it to begin with, but when it's held in such high regard, I really want to understand you know, the mechanics and, and the reasons and all that stuff why. <clears throat> so then I went back to this because so many people said in the comments, like nothing like this had been heard before. And I believe it because I've gone through, what, 30 albums now, and I haven't heard anything like this before. Not like 30 albums is extensive, but for this to come out at the time, I remember being in high school, walking around going, what the fuck's going on with all these people and the Wu-Tang Wu stuff? Like, I knew it was a group, but people were obsessed with Wu-Tang. Obsessed. I had friends that were just Wu-Tang all the time. <laughs> and now I get it. Like, now I understand why, finally. Of course, the downside is having done this album, now I've got to do all the solo spinoffs. I don't have the list in front of me, but Liquid Swords has been on there forever. Um, I, God, I can't remember the rest of them. But uh, yeah, I basically, in doing one album, I now have like four or five more new albums to add to my list that you know I got to get to. Poor me, right? Poor me. I have to listen to more good music. Oh, 
Oh, it's so tough. <laughs> what else was it? There was one other thing I wanted to say, and I can't remember now because I just got too excited. Oh, so I have to name who's my favorite member, right? That's probably a part of Wu-Tang. And it's hard to do. And I honestly don't think I could do it. You know, I lean toward RZA probably the most just because I think, okay, I like his vocal style and the fact that he did all the beats. And then I had some people send me messages saying like he was kind of the brains behind the the group more or less and in, in getting shit done on the business side. So I feel like RZA is really instrumental, but they all have portions on this album where they're fantastic. Inspector Deck is great. <laughs> Old Dirty Bastard is great. G- J- Jizza, Jizza, not Giza. G- Jizza is good too. I mean, they're all, they're all great. So... I, I guess I lean toward RZA by default just because. But, you know, Method Man, his vocals are so distinct, too. And there's just so much raw power that comes through, especially in that opening track. Bring the motherfucking ruckus. Oh, it just soothes the soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Great times. Great times. I really enjoyed this album. I really did. Um, yeah, there really was a moment. I was thinking like, maybe this is better than Illmatic. And I was like, well, you might as well just delete your YouTube channel if you say that and mean it or try and argue it. <laughs> but I put it I put it way up there, especially in, in, in the terms of, I guess, like the 90s rap that I've heard so far, which is not necessarily a lot. And really what it comes down to is just the fact that there's so much energy. It feels, it kind of feels like a, a metal band a bit. There's just so much energy. And I, I used to think it was kind of dumb. Oh, you've got this group and everybody just kind of has a small little portion. But I, I feel like that's the benefit, really, because somebody can come in with just all their energy on one verse and just crush it. And then, you know, then they're ready for the next song or whatever. I guess that's it. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, it almost earned a fire rating from me. Almost. And I have to be careful because I don't want to toss those out, you know, willy nilly. Got to keep those close to the chest. If it didn't have, honestly, if it didn't have the skits in the front on a couple of tracks, if I could bounce out of those at the end of a song and just skip to the next track and get out of the skit, I this probably would have gotten a fire, you know. So this is smoldering. <laughs> it's not quite, not quite there yet. But honestly, my complaint is so nitpicky. It's honestly, it's kind of dumb to begin with. Okay, now I'm just saying the same words over and over. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a video for my April set list for album reactions. And Friday is the first Outcast album, which is Southern. Oh, my God. I practiced it, and I had it. Southern Southern play a list of Cadillac music. I think that might have been right. Um, I'm, that might have been right. I know that's not necessarily the most popular one, but I wanted to hear that before dropping into AT Aliens. Is that how you pronounce it? It's not Atlians. I said that the last time and everyone's like, no. <laughs> ATLians. ATLians. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Uh, 